Kirchhoff the second. <laughs> Return of the Kirchhoff, yeah. Season two. Season two, yes. <laughs> An interesting one. Um, and then we have waves. 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 Yeah. What? You don't even know what it's like yet. <laughs> <laughs> and you seem like you know you won't like it. Maybe you'll really like it. Yes, I It's about waves. On Monday. <laughs> the bad impression. The word she hates the word. Potential divider. It'll be great. You'll love it. It'll blow your mind. You love everything. I know. I also like. But I don't know. <laughs> okay. Potential divider. Got this. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, let's have a look at the circuit below. And using Kirchhoff's rules, let's make um, some equations. So let me explain what's happening here. Um, we have a cell here. Can you see that? Yeah. And we have a fixed resistor and a variable resistor. And then we put a voltmeter on this variable resistor. Yeah. And we want to see what happens to this voltage on this resistor as we change this resistance. So we'll need to make some equations. So just as a warm-up, can you all make a, a loop rule um, from here? And go, well, there's only one loop. So make the loop rule here, please. So what have we got? We can just say it out loud. What have we got? V in, it's called. V in. Minus, minus, minus IR1 minus IR2 equals zero. Okay, so write that one down first to get started. Yes, draw this piece. Okay. Did you draw this and write the formula down? Yeah. So, uh, what you can do next is rearrange this formula to get I. Okay, did you get I? Yeah. So what's I here? G input the over R1. Yeah, that's the I then. Good, okay. Uh, yeah. So, suppose I want the voltage here. Using my triangle, what's the voltage here? V equals I, I or <coughs> 2. Do we know what the I is? Yeah, here it is here. So, you can say V equals I or 2, which equals this. And this is the important result that we want, okay? So, V out equals this. Hmm? 
V, well, you know the triangle, VIR. So V equals IR. And this is I. There's I there, see? And then this is R. This is I multiply R. Just multiply this by R and you get this. The same thing. Yes, no? So, we have this formula for the potential divider. That's the name of this circuit, potential divider. The potential divider... Um, yeah, so, let me explain what exactly is happening here. Take my laptop, for example. The voltage provided is 220, but my laptop doesn't want 220. It wants something like 6 volts. So we have 220 going in, but we want to have 6 here. That's what this circuit is used for. For example, if this is 220, we would like this one here to be 6. Do you understand? We're trying to change it from 220 to 6. So this OR2 is actually my laptop. Do you get what I'm saying? So my OR2 is my laptop and we want to make the voltage around the laptop 6 uh, and the input voltage is 220. So by changing this OR1, we can change the voltage. We don't usually, we can't usually change the OR2, right? Because it's the laptop. But we can change the OR1 until here we get whatever we want, which could be like 6, for example. So potential dividers are used to um, change voltages. So if you can write this definition <coughs> down. In the OR1, you know, mm -hmm. if I said in the exam the potential divider is used to change the OR1, not quite, because what I didn't say, and listen guys, the potential divider isn't used to change the voltage, it's used to reduce the voltage. It can never make it bigger, it can only make it smaller. So, uh, I, the verb, you said change. Okay. Reduce. Yeah, it's okay, yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be reduced, it could be decrease, um, anything. So how does this work? Oh, you're doing that thing again. You know that thing with like the pendulum? Do you know what I mean? No. Sir. We have a formula here. Okay. So, I change the OR1 to make whatever number I want here. No, I mean, I mean the circuit. Thing, the oh, yeah, go back to the circuit, is it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so what you asking me? But, what? I don't know. Because, um. I'm trying to adjust your thinking. Um, <coughs> you're thinking like, how is it we're doing the thing that it's doing? Mm -hmm. But instead, what I want you to think about is, we made this equation, which is true. We made this equation, which is true. And we made this equation, which is true. And you can see that the output voltage, you can get it from this input voltage. What happens if I make the R1 bigger and bigger? What happens to this? gets bigger or smaller? Smaller. 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 So if I make the R1 really big, because the R1 I can change, if this is really big, then the output becomes smaller. Okay. So what's happening here is you can adjust the R1. By making the R1 bigger, you make the output voltage smaller. Now, I don't know if... Yeah, okay. but, but how can I choose how big do I make that? Ah, you'll have to solve. So you'll have to put the numbers in to figure out what you need to make the OR1. So for example, like with my laptop, what did I say the output might be? 6. And the input? 220. 
and the resistance for my laptop or two will be printed on the battery or something. No, it depends. You know, in some countries it's 110. So do you have to change that to every time you change the R1, sorry, every time you change the Oh yes, so the R1 has to be changed. This is why this laptop will not work in 110, unless you have some way of changing it automatically. Which they do, because that's something we'll look at in semester two, but that's why this thing is here. This is for changing the voltage. Yeah, yeah. Now, nowadays these can be made quite small, but this is changing the voltage here. So it can take 110 and 220. But I don't know. If I put in some country that's like 300, it won't work. Not that 300 exists. Well, because it's only set to take in 110 or 220. So it knows what to do in those situations. Is it that it will work? Yeah. And that's something we'll look in semester two on how it can uh, adjust for that. But this is a very simple way to change the voltage. In real life, this is not actually what this does. Uh, this changes the voltage, it reduces it, but there's another way to reduce it, which we'll do in semester two, uh, because the problem with this way, I think it's not very efficient, because what will happen is um, there'll be some heat here, because if I make this big to reduce the voltage here, then it means more um, resistance, means more... Uh, energy was used, more voltage was used here, which means it has to convert into something and will convert into heat. So in real life, uh, I don't really think these are used so much, except for very, very simple situations. Yeah. So the only thing for this lesson is the formula for output voltage. So let's have a look at some examples now. We just have the one example. So, Wait, before you write it down, let's read it. A circuit requires only 11 volts, but the mains provide 220. You have a 10 milliohm and an X milliohm resistor. So what's happening here is, uh, um, to make it clear, this is the 10, because we know it, and the one we can change, we're going to call it X. Yep. All right, very good. So, my first question is, draw the potential circuit. Well, we don't need to do that because we just did it. Uh, but just be clear that the one here is 10 milliohms and the one here is X. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I'll give you a chance to use the formula to find X. Please be careful, it's milliohms. Yeah. So, we can just ignore milli and then we can do it like 10 and... No. So that last level have the mini leg. Oh. Okay. No. Because both X and uh, the R2 is in milliohms. No, I would say you should do it like this to be safer. You say R2 is 10 times 10 to the minus 3 ohms. Because this is 10 milliohms. Mm -hmm. And then R1 is X. X times 10 to the minus 3 ohms. So you should use this and this in your formula.
Okay, you got it there for X? Yeah. All right. So what's the output voltage? Uh, 11, isn't it? And then the OR uh, 1 is X times 10 to the minus 3 plus 10 times 10 to the minus 3. And up the top here is 10 times 10 to the minus 3. And the input voltage? 220. Now what's nice here is they cancel, cancel, cancel. And the other and the ten was be cancelled. No, it does not. Mm. It's like this. Oh. So I'll bring this up here and, uh, and I bring that down there and I'll bring that down there as well. So I have eleven over ten times x plus ten equals 220. You know, that was silly. I should have brought this one up here and this one down there. So I get x plus 10 equals 2200 over 11. And then I get x is that minus 10. So uh, I got a big number because it's wrong. Thank you. Uh, what's my mistake? Where's it wrong? I've got 190. Yeah. I yeah, that's what I got, 190. Ah! <laughs> 190. Milli -o. I also got it's milli -o. It's Is it? Yeah. No, it's not a milli -o. No. It's not a milli -o. No. I also don't know. But is it ohms Mil or no. is it milli? The ohm is o pi 19. In ohm is 0 0.019. No, no. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, so this is x equals 190. But what was x? x was in milli ohms? Yeah, so it's yeah. That's right, it's milli ohms is the unit. Yes. So x is 0 0.19. Yeah, no, this is right. We like when we put the x value of x, it was x multiplied by 10 minus 3. Oh, but you look it up. Well, the unit we're measuring x in is milli ohms. So whatever I get for x, that's in milli ohms. But in my formula, I have to put in numbers. I can't put in millis. You know, uh, I can't think. Of, we've never done one like this. I can't think of an example. If this was Kilograms. Would you say the unit in the answer is kilograms? Yeah. If, or if it was uh, was millimeters, it'd be millimeters. Yeah, it's, it's fine. But yeah, but I when you use in your formula, like for distance, speed, or time, do you use meters or millimeters? When I convert it, it's the same in the end, though. I don't have to reconvert it to something else. That's a different thing. Every single question we had at this. Yeah. That's why we. Like I was asking you in at the starting. Whether I should like use ten multiple over ten minus three or just read both the values? Basically, E as point comes down to it because it cancelled in the equation. Yeah. For example, let's say we used micro ohms. Let's say we convert it into Stephen ohms, whatever. So, like for example, on the top I would have what was it, ten times ten to the minus three. Yeah. So let's say we have ten Stephen ohms, whatever that is, and then we have here. Uh, what is it? X Stephen Ohms plus 10 Stephen Ohms. Um, it doesn't matter what the unit is because they cancel. But at the end, the X at the end of the day is still in whatever it is I said at the start of the question. I'm measuring X in milli ohms. So I think the simplest answer is what Iad said. It's because they all cancel. It means the unit was never figured into the calculation really because it all cancelled out. It's a little bit like, remember that example with the, um, the um, I said with the log, Which is the log A minus log B is equal to log A over B. So it actually doesn't matter what the units are for A and B because they'll cancel. So you, if I did not convert these, convert these into milli ohms in my fraction, I would still be in the same situation because they would have cancelled anyway. So yeah, I think that's the simplest explanation because they cancelled out. Right, how much current do we have? So what's the formula for current? 
Yeah, V over R, is it? Yes. Yeah, so do we know the V? We do. Uh, now, is it the current in, in coming out, so at the R2? So uh, the V is 11 and the R2 is <coughs> 190 times 10 to the minus 3. Three U one. Uh, I think I wanted R2. How much is coming out? R2 is 10. Oh, sorry. Thank you. R2 is 10. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 10 milli. Uh, so a big enough number, 1,100 amps, yeah. Yeah. And the last part, I need to draw it. So let's recap what we have. Um, this is, what did we set this at? Uh, Add one. This is R1, but what was the answer for R1? 190, 190 milliohms. And this one here was 10 milliohms. And then the voltage here was 220, was it? 220 and 11. Yeah, and then here we got 11. Yeah. yeah. Now, usually in real life, what happens is this is connected inside some kind of box and the 220 goes in and then we have a voltage that comes out so we can't actually change this in real life so in real life what happens is that uh, we connect our machine like our laptop our computer up to the resistor in parallel so let's say in my example we connect up a 2 ohm like this. Will the voltage here in the 2 ohm be still 11 or will it change? What do you think? Well it will change because it's like you're putting a different resistor here. You add these together. So let's just quickly add them together. Uh, what rule adds them together here? Yeah, what's that called? Yeah. One over R equals one over zero point zero one O plus one over two. Is that okay what I done just there, yeah? yeah. Why not? Why is it not okay? How did you get this? No, how do you stop it? I know it's R equals 1 over R. Yeah, so this is 2 and this is 10 and I'm putting them together to make 1. But this is V and this is R. What is V? No, that's, a, that's 10 milli ohms and that's 2 ohms. 2 resistors. I put 2 resistors together now. Okay. Yeah, I connect them, I click it in. Right, so we got here R is... Um, Nine point nine five milli ohms if I convert it. So will the voltage here be the same or different? No, it'll be different. It'll be this is the reason it'll be different. This is like the new R2 because I've changed the resistance yeah. here. So if I calculate the output voltage, I still get roughly the same answer, which was 11 volts. Now why am I still getting roughly the same answer? Because, because this is still nearly 10 milli. So why did it not change much? Well the reason is because when you have two resistors, one really small and one really big, and you combine them in parallel, the answer is still roughly equal to the smaller one. Now it's not exactly the same, is it? No. But, you know, it's close to the same. So this means that this box, it could have a sticker on it that says, converts 220 to 11. And um, it doesn't matter what resistor I put here, because if I put 20, I'll still have the same situation. It still will be roughly 10, because the small one um, is more important in the calculation. So what I'm trying to say here is, 
Um, that's why if I have something like this, it could still work if I put in a 2 ohm resistor or a 50 ohm resistor. So uh, Adnan, you were asking me, well does that mean every time I have to change this? Yeah. But I don't if the resistor on the outside is much bigger than the one on the inside because in total when they combine it will still roughly equal this. So the only time I would need to change this would be when? What would have to be different? It have a on the well it's still going to be about 10 so something else maybe. Here if the 220 changes. This is set for 220. So if I go to a different country there needs to be some way that this can change so that uh, I can get the right voltage here. Now I'm talking a bit more about than what you would need for the exam but in the exam what they have done for this question is connect a 2 ohm resistor to R2 what is the output now? And if this is much bigger than this what I want you to see that is the answer doesn't change much. Still the same. Now in the exam they don't do it like this uh, in the exam, this will not be milli ohms. They usually use ohms, so the answer actually is quite different than in the exam. But uh, it's just uh, an extra thing to do. You use this formula, and then you put it back into the formula you used a moment ago. The R2 changes a little bit. Yeah, uh, that's all there is to this. It's just the one formula. So, like the homework question uh, is this one here. Um, is it a lot? Yeah, so in this one I use a, a wire to make the resistor. And instead, the way I change the resistance is by changing the length of the wire. Yeah, because you remember in the formula for resistivity, what is it? R equals rho L over A. So if I want to change the resistance, I can change the L. Yeah. So what we have here um, is the first one. Yeah. How much resistance in the copper wire? The copper wire is cut into two to make two resistors for the potential divider. How much resistance in each resistor? How long is each resistor? And then we connect the 10 in parallel like I did a moment ago. Uh, the voltage is not 220, why not? Uh, now it will, uh, sorry, 222, now it will still be roughly 22. Uh, adjust the length until you do get exactly 22, so you might have to change it a little bit. Um, well, I don't know what the resistance is, so it might be more different than 22. Uh, the lengths are changed slightly to these. What is the output voltage now? What is the, okay, yeah, so I know it's a lot here. But it's putting together a lesson from resistivity as well as a bit of a revision. Do you want to take a picture? No, that's fine. Would I close this? No, I Okay, well then that's why I said. Why would you change the color when I'm doing it? Because of the. It's like. I think it's to do. What you can't see with, with your energy. eyes is the. Well, no, the refresh rate. You know what I mean, refresh? It's the, the, changing. The, the light is changing. Okay. The picture is changing faster than your eyes can see, but your yeah. phone can see the change. Well, I changed the video. Oh. I took the video. Where are you going? Uh, okay. I didn't think you were just leaving the class. I have enough of this. I right. Never, I never leave the class. <laughs> I can close this now? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Uh, we'll do this one. Um, not today. Not today. We'll do this one on Monday, so we can have a look at the coursework. Mm -hmm.